Welcome, everyone. To say that I am excited about today's guest is a complete understatement. We've had a few conversations before today, and I know that you are going to absolutely love what she has to talk about. Today, my guest is Brucie Denise, and she is the, the payroll and benefits operations manager for TikTok. Yes, TikTok has employees outside of influencers, and she is one of them, and I'm very excited to have her on today. And some of her additional background is that she was the human resources and payroll manager with Astral Brands, which is a cosmetic and skincare company. So I know we're going to end up talking about that transition from beauty into tech, which I'm sure is its own, own thing in your world. And then the other thing I want to mention, and I think this is going to be really refreshing for some of you, she has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and social work. She has, uh, oh, from University of West Florida, and she has her master's in public administration from Troy University and a human resources management certification from the University of Georgia. So I just want to note that that is a lot of different types of degrees, and she is still here in human resources. So for those of you who have one degree but want to go and do something else, it is absolutely possible. And so I want to welcome and thank Brucey Denise for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Like, super excited. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited too because <laughs> you have such a great background. And one of the reasons that I brought you on is because you do work for one of the biggest social media apps out there right now. And I think so many people just think about influencers when it comes to a company like TikTok, but in reality, there is an entire group of people that work on the corporate side of that. And there are opportunities there, which I think is absolutely amazing. So one of the first questions that I want to ask you is, can you tell me about a couple of poignant transitions in your career that got you to this position at TikTok? Well, actually, leave in Florida and taking control of my own career path, um, pretty much get out my own way. It was one of the most scariest, I promise you, things ever. Because I'm from Florida, always lived there, all over the state. But to actually take the leap of faith, get out of the comfort zone and move into Atlanta was the best thing ever. And also, YP, my favorite job, best job ever. And it that's comes. Yellow Pages, right? Yellow Pages, yellow yes. Pages. Yellow Pages. Okay, okay, because yes. I didn't mention that yes. in the intro. <laughs> yellow Pages. Yes, so you yes. did have a background at Yellow Pages. And for yes. those of you who don't know <laughs> what Yellow Pages it's is, it's a phone book. It's a phone book. Yes. We used to yes. have phone books delivered to our homes before yes. we had internet yes. and, <laughs> and a smartphone. So Correct. that's what Yellow Pages is. And it was a choir, of course. Of course. <laughs> and it was like the best job, but also pointed me and pushed me into the next level because the things and the complexities around my duties there, I was well equipped for the next level. So it, it really helped me get to this point. And everything is a step of stone. That's how I look at things. So that's how it helped me get to here. Um, once I left YP, I landed a role at Astral. And so... What, what brought you? Beauty. Yeah, what brought you into the beauty industry? Because going from something like Yellow Pages, then to the beauty, and then to tech, that's quite a transition of industries. Like, what sparked that for you? Sometimes I wonder, <laughs> but also <laughs> I also have a side in blogging and beauty. Before the whole trend of influencing and all that good stuff. I was a blocker and heavy into the partnerships and things with different companies. So kind of understanding the business and the cause world and all that good stuff also helped understand that role, that world as well. That's awesome. Oh, I love hearing about that. And then <laughs> why, I mean, why specifically did you choose TikTok? How did you get that position? Was it just, was it an application? Did you know someone? I mean, what ended up happening to get you there? 
Well, I saw the role on LinkedIn. I'm not, at the time I was not on TikTok. Um, I saw the role and it shared my profile with the recruiter or whatnot. And then they reached out to me and went from there. It was a very intense process. It was several rounds. When I say several rounds, several rounds. <laughs> very intense. Um, but that's how it happened. It was one of those things I didn't put too much thought into it. I was like, oh, this TikTok, I'm coming from beauty. And yeah. So that's how it was. Um, LinkedIn is very, very, very powerful, guys. Very powerful. Um, but if you use it the right way, not saying that you have to post and all that stuff, because I don't, I don't make the long posts I would look like and share every now and again, but I'm not the ones that put content out on that platform. Right. So don't get wrapped up into that thing that you have to to get noticed. Make sure you you're resume and everything lines up with LinkedIn and and make it happen. So that's how it was. Um, They found me and here I am. That's Ah. awesome. I love hearing that because I am a huge proponent of LinkedIn. It's something that I push with current clients. And it's one of my tips that you will see consistently on social media is get your LinkedIn up to date, get those keywords in there because that's how the recruiters can yes. find you on the yes. back end. It's yes. so important. And you're yes. a testimony to yes. that. So all my roles so pretty much. much I found come from LinkedIn. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. I love hearing that. I love hearing that. <laughs> so looking back on your career, you've had a couple different transitions um, and a couple different industries and things like that. Tell me about a time that you wish you could go back and do something different in your career. And what would you do? Nothing. Nothing, really? No. Okay, you got to no. tell me more about that. Tell me more no. about that. I believe everything happens for a reason. I don't believe in I, everything's a lesson. I don't, I, everything happens. It's a lesson. And it's a part of the journey. It's part of your path. Embrace it. And if it's failure, feel forward. You learn from it. Do not get down on yourself. Do better next time and prevent the next time. But you know, if that comes back around, you know what to do differently. And so with me, I look at it like, wow, I made it through that. So when I have tough days, I look where I come from. Like, hey, I made it through this. I can make you do anything. So I don't regret anything. And I know that may sound so cliche, like, yeah, right. No, it's really true. Because I look at things that help me get to this point and I can really stand tall and say, I'm a testament. Learn from me. I'm a walking, <laughs> walking <laughs> spirit. So it's a lot. Use me as an example, because it, if you want something bad enough, you can make it happen. Um, and don't look at the, the downside of everything. It's a bright side of everything. It's a lesson in it. You're going to learn something from it. You may not see it now, days later, but think about it. You will. You truly will. Because that's how I reflect on things. Yes. I love that perspective. It's the difference between having the growth mindset, right? Like having that growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. I feel like the people who live in the past and live in what happened or live in whatever horrible situation happened in their work, Mm -hmm. those toxic Mm -hmm. situations that we can get into. Mm -hmm. If you live in that, it's going to prevent you from moving yes. forward. So I love that perspective that you bring. You have to change your mindset. You have to. Yes. It starts here. It starts when you make up your mind. Like, I can do this. It's going to be tough days, tough situations, but you have to make up in your mind. I can make it through this. Yes. You have to. No matter what it is, personally and professionally, you have to make up your mind. I can do this. Tough days, tough work environments, tough boss, whatever the case is, you have to make up your mind. I can do this. I'm going to learn something. Everything is a stepping stone. I'm coming out of here like a giant. I got this. That's how I see things. Um, yeah. I love that. I love that perspective. And I think when you go through some of those tough situations, the toxic bosses, the toxic cultures, or Mm -hmm. sometimes it's not even a toxic culture, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. fit well for you, you know, and you learn from that. And then when you go to the next position, you remember, oh, I did not like this part of this company, or I didn't like this quality in my boss. And Mm -hmm. so you ask different questions as you go into that that next position. So I think that that is such a great perspective to have. Be kind to yourself. We're oftentimes so hard on ourselves that we tear ourselves down and make us feel less than, which in fact, we're great. It's great. It's within all of us. 
So be kind to yourself. When things don't go your way, say, hey, it's going to come. I'm going to keep putting the work. It's going to happen. Stay true to your dreams and keep pushing. It will happen. If you're looking for a management role, hey, see where you fit in the market. Take things from where you see a job description for a management role and apply it to what you knew your current role. You're prepping yourself for that role. See yourself in that space already. Don't wait for someone say, hey, I think you're ready for a management role. No, you're making your mind that you're prepping yourself for that. So when that time comes, you're ready to step in and roll with it. Absolutely. That's how you look at things. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing that, everybody? <laughs> I hope you're hearing what she is saying. That is so key. That is so key. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that because I think people are going to hear that and recognize in themselves that they're holding themselves back. And it, mm-hmm. it it's crazy to me how many people do that because one person said something. <sighs> One person in your whole sphere said something and it holds you back. I'll be honest. I was that person that happened to me and it took me a while to move past that. But once I did, I look back on it now and I laugh because I'm like, why did I do that to myself? And and (laughs) granted, I did not wake up like this. Like, oh, I got this. It's one of those things I have not, I should say, I have not always been this way. It growth. It takes time to get to that point. Know thyself. You want better, you do better, and and you studying and you putting yourself in those situations where you can move on, you know. And I was like, I'm ready. It, it starts with me. You have to be the change you want to see. So I found yes. things that more so meditating, yoga, things, how to de stress and things of that sort, and gain clarity. And when I realized that I wanted more out of life, who gonna stop me? No one. <laughs> And that's why I said, now, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it and not stepping on toes. I don't play dirty. You, no one wins when playing dirty. No, 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 no. That is not the rule to the game. That is not. You treat everyone kind. Being nice is different, you know, especially it's a difference. But being kind is key. Being ugly, no. Playing dirty, no. I understand people say it's a doggy dog world. Corporate is the beast. I get all that. But you be the change. People are still people at the end of the day. And even the worst people are still people. (laughs) Yes. And you're going to come across people who just absolutely, ugh. But that does not change you. Yes. No matter how bad someone treats you, you still be that nice, kind, even though niceness really don't get you too far. Get you too far? Being kind does, you know? So. Agreed. This is such a great segue into my next question. (laughs) So one of the things that I want my audience to hear is management tips, either from you as a manager or things that you've learned that have helped you become a better employee. And so what are, I don't know, a couple of your management tips, either as a manager yourself or as someone Mm -hmm. who is managed by another person that you think are helpful for people to know? Say lead by example. You know, uh, you want to be able to lead by example. You want to be able to listen. Listening is key, you know, and you you want to be that coach and mentor. And you want to see your team thrive. Be coach your team and whatnot. And also, don't be afraid to stand in the gap, stand get in the trenches with your team. That's going back to lead, leading by example. But also, there's so many managers and leaders who are afraid to see their team thrive, want to hold them back. If someone comes to you and says, hey, I am ready for this. I'm hungry. Help them. Plant that seed. Do not hold anyone back. Don't do that. Do not. You may take away from the team. Okay, you'll find someone else. Train someone else. Okay, great. You know, but do not thrive. Help people thrive. Plant that seed. Believe me. Years to come, they're going to turn back and thank you. I get it to this day. Thank you for believing in me because here I am now. And it warms my little heart. I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And then standing in the gap, don't, you know, expect your team to do something that you pretty much want to do. If they need any help, I, I try to learn the roles from both ends. From my team, from processing things, I'm there with them. Long days. We have very long days in my world. Long days. I'm there. I'm not logging off and my team's still on, quote unquote, grinding it out. No, I'm there with them in the trenches. We are here. We are one. We are a united front. We are one. So 
be that manager. I know everyone got a different leadership style. I'm non-traditional. I'm not traditional by far. I'm not that suited and booty kind of person. I'm not, no. And I always said, nope, not, nope, nope, not me. <laughs> I think that's needed. I think that's needed right now because you're seeing a different workforce come up that care about different things than the workforce before us, you know? Okay. And I think it's important to have a different approach approach. It's not really, I feel like it's not an iron fist anymore. It's really mm-hmm. coming alongside people. Do you, do you feel that right now? Right. Um, the workforce changed. People are not working like our parents work. And I tell people all the time um, that we're not, people are not putting jobs above family, all that good stuff. But at the same time is you want to treat people like people, not like machines and robots and things of that sort. Because once they're not happy, they're gone. A couple years, maybe three, they're out. They want more. So you want to groom them. Professional development is key. Yes. Yes. Professional development is key. Yeah, it's so it's so hard when I get clients who are really high achieving, they want a lot out of their career. And their manager or their organization is stunting Mm -hmm. their growth. They're ready. They're hungry. They're talented. Mm -hmm. They have so much to offer. And the organization can't keep up Mm -hmm. with their capabilities. That, that to me, it just breaks my heart when I see that because everybody loses at that point. The organization loses and then the employee loses and because they, they're going to leave. You know, and now this company is out somebody that could have done really great things for them yes. if they had taken time to really embrace them. Do you have any sure. tips for for people who are like that? Because I feel like that's you. I feel like <laughs> I feel like you're that ambitious professional that's like, look, if you can't give me what I need, I'm I'm out. I'm gonna go find it somewhere else. Like, do you have any tips for people who are in a similar position? and aren't quite sure what to say or what to do with their manager or their company. Very open. And I always build relationships and report to whoever I'm reporting to. It's oftentimes received well, nah, but whatever. <laughs> but no, seriously, I, I, I try to build that report and let them know, hey, this is my goal. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to accomplish while I'm here. I'm very, very open and honest with anyone. I don't believe in gray areas. I let people know where they stand with me, what I want to accomplish. And my, I've been fortunate enough to come into organizations where, hey, this is what we want you to do. Hint, right now, my role at TikTok was taken to the next level. That is my sole purpose, expanding the team, building these relationships with vendors and things, because we're, we're a startup. We're very new. It's like, Raising the kid, pretty much. So, um, and we say it's like building a plane as we find find it. That is true. The policies, procedures, and things of that sort. So, I, I let people know this is what I want to do, and I always tell people I don't tie myself to companies and jobs. My my thing is to fulfill my purpose and align that way. And so, I let them know this is what I'm looking to do. This is what I want to do. This is where is it where I'm at my career. And I, I let them know. But at the same time, you have to be open. I say build that report. Have those weekly or bi-weekly meetings with your whoever you report to. Let them know. This is what's going on. This is what I'm working on. This is what I hope to achieve. I also go back to like the objective knowledge of the OKRs. Mm-hmm. And that would help as well. So um, putting that out there. Um, j- just be honest and be honest with self. Because you know something's not going to serve you, why apply for it? Right. You know? Right. Don't yeah. do that. It goes back to this is what I want to do. This is what I want to take my career. You have to sit down and have a real heart to heart with self and just not spray your resume out there. Or even in a company, find things that you like and have that conversation with your manager. Like, hey, I like this. This is what I'm good at. I'm struggling with this. I need a more I need more help with this and so on and so forth. And that also will help you. You come out and your weakness may turn to a strength, so to right. speak. Right. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think too, when you're early in your career, you think you have to have it figured out, 
But the reality is when you get, you know, even five, 10 years in the clarity around what you enjoy, (sighs) what you don't, who you like, who you don't like, all of that really happens. And I think for people who are listening, who are earlier in their career, Mm -hmm. what I'm hearing too is, you know, figure out what you like and what you Mm -hmm. don't like, but you need some time and experience for that to happen as well. So you might have some idea based Mm -hmm. on different things that you've done, Mm -hmm. but then you have different exposure to something new or a different type of manager, a different type of corporate structure. You know, you're in a startup. That type of environment is completely different than like a big bank. (laughs) Yes. how they yes. work and run and function. And mm-hmm. one might work really well for you, but the other might not. That's correct. One of the things that you started to talk about was a little bit more about what your actual role is. And mm-hmm. I, I missed asking this right in the beginning, <laughs> but you started to allude to it in that last question. I would love for you to take a few minutes and talk about what you actually do, because there are so many different facets of human resources. And I think you're in a more specific area. And so I would love for you to just give a quick overview of what are some of the big things that you do and some of the skills that you're using on a regular basis. Okay. Well, I oversee all of the operations for payroll benefits for the U.S. nationwide. Um, I manage a team. Um, that pretty much goes to anything dealing with the payroll and our employees, the benefits, health, 401k, all that good stuff. I oversee that, the audits, the dinner management, putting systems in place. Um, I just re- recently went live with the time and attendance for our hourly employees. So a lot of people think of the total rewards. I really would like to do more comp one day, <laughs> but that's part of that umbrella in a sense. But my specialty is payroll benefits with project management, vendor management, building those relationships, and also team building. I'm expanding the team, adding um, positions. Um, I manage the team with benefits, uh, payroll analysts, tax, all that stuff. Tax is my least favorite. I don't know too much about it. I have a high level of it. And it's okay to not know everything, but I'm very knowledgeable of a lot of things. Um, But I have a great team. And, and I know the payroll side processing and being in there with them. So we need help doing our benefits portion of upload for payroll purposes. I'm there I'm doing that. New hires, uploads, I do that. So we look at HR side of things, look at the overall grand picture and not just, it's, it's a good thing to get a touch and feel for all. I've worn many hats. I've been traditional HR, been just solely in payroll side, been an HR coordinator, those things. But I narrow down what I really like. I like the back end of things, making things tick, putting things in place. Like, wow, this is working for all our employees. So a lot of people don't think about that. HRS is really great right to consider. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot. Training development, organization design, all those things. So just take the time out and study the field the industry, all that good stuff. Um, Reach out to mentors or find a mentor in different organizations like SHRM and your local SHRM chapters and things. But what I do, I oversee a lot. And and oftentimes you don't think about what you do because you're in it. (laughs) And it's a space. But I I handle a a lot of things Um, from managing the team, as I mentioned, but all of the operations for payroll in the ministry side, working with our vendors, making sure we get the best rates and negotiations and things like that, so managing our contracts and things. So it's a lot, but it's fun, and I'm learning a lot. Do I know everything? Oh, of course not, no. Um, and, and why I want something where I know it all, where, where can I grow? Right. But I'm up for the challenge at the same. That's awesome. That's so good. Thank you so much for sharing that, because I think that'll, <laughs> that'll give people a much better idea, because I know for me, when you, when you say payroll, it's like, so you just like process checks all day (laughs) and it's not that it's not that at all. And Mm -hmm. I think sometimes with HR, it gets really muddy around what you actually do. And there are Mm -hmm. so many different areas of HR that you can Uh go into. And what I'm hearing from you too, is as you progress in your career, if you're going that HR route, then you probably want to narrow into one of those arms of HR in order to be able to move up a little bit quicker versus staying a generalist? I would say um, a lot of people count out payroll. Ah, That's boring. But 
you will get more exposure because you, you see everything. <laughs> everything pretty much um when i say you know you preview to a lot of different things but also the benefits side of things the comp side um but it is more to it than just coordinator manager specialist uh, and it also depends on the structure of the company as well we have to think about that as well because payroll we want those departments we're in limbo i've just been fortunate enough to be in, uh, to be on the hr side of things um that's where i become dual i know traditional hr solely hr things and i know payroll benefits and all that good stuff um uh, project management which is really one of those things like project management and hr yeah i know a lot of different systems as well <laughs> so um, right now i work with adp workforce now and workday uh, i've had experience with implementations for pay kind of lots of you name it we can have a whole other discussion about that i know a lot of systems <laughs> oh man if anybody has been at a company when they've been doing a system change or <laughs> when a system is being implemented Yes. Ooh, the amount of project management yes. that goes yes. in. <laughs> yes. That's what I said, being kind. Not nice oftentimes. We have to be kind. Yes, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and especially in the tech space. You work with a lot of different people. Um, and it's global. I work really, really close with Beijing. Like more so close with Beijing than the U.S. side of things because my seat in the house, in a sense. Um, and I work with other countries. Australia, everyone. I work with it's, it's interesting because being that as a global company, I'm like, I'm new to this, but it, it feels like been a year, some change at this point, how fast it is, right. but it's a, it's a good change. But at the same time, it's a lot of work. You have to go in with a mindset of, I can do this. Right. And not count yourself out, but go in there and say, I'm fulfilling my purpose of whatever your purpose is. I love that. But I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yes, no, that absolutely answers my question. And I think that's going to be really helpful for a lot of listeners who mm -hmm. not only are interested in HR, but who maybe can think about their functional area mm -hmm. in a different way. You know, mm -hmm. how can you narrow down or are there other areas or what does your functional area look like in a different industry? Because what it looks like in tech or startup versus something more traditional or a small business is going to look different. So I think that perspective is absolutely amazing. And I'll also add um, a career journal. Oh, yes. Okay. Talk about that. Talk about <laughs> that. Because this is something that I tell clients all the time. And you brought it up in one of our conversations. And it just absolutely validated <laughs> me so yes talk about it a career journal is very very vital very very important because uh, companies that's with the performance use it's a whole nother conversation but at the same time you can keep track of what you accomplish what you're doing day in and day out um oftentimes you'll forget but you can write down and you can see also if you keep it you can see the growth the things you handle when you start out and keep a career journal like forever at this point to now my planner, I write down notes yes. of what I do each day, day in and day because I'm off my mind is everywhere. I feel like I have like 10 tabs open over here. And I write down different things and things I accomplish, heavy projects that I'm working on. I look back like, wow, I did this. I'm good. Yes. <laughs> Certain times I'm like, I'm, and I'm, I'm very resourceful. I can make something really out of nothing and be quite for real. I pride myself on that because oftentimes resources are limited, but I can. I got this. So the journal is very, very important, especially when you may out of blue place on a pip, whatever the case is, you can prove what you've done. And like, hey, I handled this, this day, had this meeting, so on. So it's good to cover you, show your accomplishments and things of that sort. So please, please, people, please invest in your journal, go to Walmart, Target, what have you, and pick up a journal. And it's no right or wrong way to write down whatever how you want to do it, but just keep track of your daily tasks that you handle things that you accomplished. Yeah. And I'll tell you on the other side of it, I don't do resume writing anymore, but for you as a professional, when you get to that point, whether you write your resume yourself or you hire somebody to do it, mm -hmm. having that information is, oh my gosh, it makes it so much easier. So, so much easier. And I actually have a client who keeps a spreadsheet. This is like next level. Ooh, okay. So for my super, is. for my super ambitious people out there, she keeps a spreadsheet and she keeps, um, 
whatever like the task or the project is, and then she'll give it a category based on like what type of work it falls into because she's kind of a jack of all trades also. And Mm -hmm. so then when she's looking at different positions and different skill sets, she'll be like, oh, this is a project management thing. So here's my project management work or here's my leadership or here's where I did analytics or something like that. So she keeps it like uh, next level organized, <laughs> mm-hmm. but there are so many different ways to do that. And I think even what you're saying, just start with writing it down because mm-hmm. especially like we talked about earlier, if you're in a place where you're dwelling on the past or maybe your mindset isn't quite where it needs to be right now, starting this process will really change that around. Even if you put simple tasks that you do each day, Mm -hmm. it shows you I'm accomplishing something. I'm good at this thing. Even if it's something that is on autopilot for you, that means it's a skill that you have that you don't have to think about anymore. So yes, love that. And also to that note, it is okay to clap for yourself. It's okay to toot your own horn. It is absolutely okay. It's okay. Sometimes you have to step back and say, wow. Just absolutely wow. It's okay. It is absolutely okay. Because it's well-deserved. It's okay. (laughs) Absolutely. And I think the small, like celebrate the small wins too. It's not just about finishing that big project at work. Sometimes it's, you had a hard week but you made it through the week and yes. <laughs> you're still standing. You're reading my mind. Yes. You yes. know, and I think even with the, with Corona, that has been a huge thing for people. It's like, mm-hmm. did I shower today? Did mm-hmm. I put on clothes that weren't sweats? I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's an extreme, but mm-hmm. for some people, that's where they got to because mm-hmm. it was this big unknown and mm-hmm. stress but celebrating, you know what? I did my best today. I did really well. And here's what I did really well. Yes. I, that is absolutely important. So thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. I love that. I love that. Okay. I have a fun question because I love books. I'm an avid reader. I know a lot of my listeners are always looking for book suggestions. Mm -hmm. So I would love to know what is a book that changed your perspective about your career or life? The Memo by Mendel Hart. I, this book is like near and dear to me. I did not just read this book. I studied this book. And I even went a step further and I give this book to all my mentees. And we actually had like book discussions and, and uh, like our own little book club about it. Because for me, in my point of my career, it was more so of not changing my mindset, but recognizing things more so around me from the leadership standpoint. Um, but for my team, and I even told this book for my team as well, for my team is just one of those things of understanding and learning from a different perspective. Um, same for my mentees, and they all have these ha-ha moments, and, and I, same here. And I, that book is so near and dear to me, and it's even better that having the chance to chat with Minda and all these things, <laughs> Um, you know, she's had me on Twitter and IG and all those things and I have that chance to chat with her. And she's very responsive. It's like, OK, I really support this book to the core. Um, so, yeah, that's my favorite book is is because of that reason. It helps shape me more in this leadership seat. Um, and I'm a I, I love podcasts. <laughs> I love Liz Ryan. <laughs> she's my spirit animal. <laughs> You guys got to check out Liz Ryan. She is absolutely a hoot. Please do. <laughs> and I'll link all this in the show notes and the blog page for this episode so that if you're looking for it, you can find it all there. Everything that, that you trust me, guys, you guys gonna laugh as well. She is funny, but she is the truth. She's been in HR for like, I think it's like 82 or 85. So yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she, she's from the personnel department. <laughs> But she's honest. That's a long time ago for okay. those of you that do not know. <laughs> yes. And she's honest and it's just real and it's real content. And you can feel it. And I, when I stumped on her on LinkedIn and I'm like, wow, I like this lady. And from her tweets and everything, I'm like, she's really just dropping gems. I like it because I'm not traditional and I don't, 
I'm not that, okay, group thing. I'm not that person. I, I think totally different. I give different sides of, that's me. I don't go against the, uh, no. <laughs> and, and sometimes I'm a disruptor and that's absolutely okay. It's, it's we all need about that. The delivery. Yeah, it's that. all about delivery and, and improving and all this kind of stuff, the back end, how that's a whole nother thing, but it's okay. That's absolutely okay when you have the work to prove it and, and reasons behind and all that good stuff. But yes, Liz Ryan, I love podcasts, audiobooks, and things of that sort. I really ever watch TV, but when I do, I'm on YouTube. I love Greg's learning. That's another thing that you guys can um, check out. His videos are very short to the point. You can learn a lot. And to that, I would say, not to get off on a tangent, but whatever you want to learn is out there. Do not wait for it to fall in your lap. YouTube, podcast, connecting. You guys can reach out to me. I'm open to whatever you guys want to know. Questions, I don't care. I'm, I'm here to help. But it's out there for you all. Do not be afraid to step out and better self. The change starts with you. Yes. With you. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much though. It, that, that is a huge message. And I think what's so important about what you're sharing is you're following people that are influential for you Mm -hmm. in your field. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes when we're in our career, we try to separate, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like my career is here and it's from nine to five. And then I have a life outside of that, which is Mm -hmm. great. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But when you start to use time to absorb content and information about your career path or the future Mm -hmm. of your career path or what that looks like, I think Mm -hmm. it changes your perspective. I think you become more, I I don't know, connected to it in a way because you're going that extra mile. And I think that's Mm -hmm. the difference too, between somebody who is complacent in their Mm -hmm. career, which we all have those moments. So Mm -hmm. if that's you right now, it's okay. We all go through it. But that's the difference between somebody who's complacent and somebody who is really taking control of mm-hmm. their career, of mm-hmm. their trajectory, and where they're headed, right? And my best friend is that way. She is fine coasting. And I want you guys to know, know your lane. Know what works for you, what you love to do. But be good at what you're doing. And she is great. And she's been in payroll for the longest. And some of the things she taught me, pretty much all the things I know in payroll, and this, and she will tell you, but she's fine. She's with her family, her schedule works, and she's not into moving up to manager level, but she knows the stuff, but she's fine. It is absolutely okay. Do not compare your journey to the next person. It is okay if you're happy what you're doing. As long as you are happy, you're successful, okay? Don't get wrapped up in the hype of, I got to be this by this time. Just no, your lane is your lane. When you feel it's time to move, you make that move. Don't let Mary Jane and whoever else tell you this is what you need to do but if you're looking for help to get into that next stuff it's okay to take those things into into consideration but don't get wrapped up into trying to compare yourself to the next person there are people who are absolutely fine staying where they are they love their company loving what they do the schedule work for them they can go to pto meet and everything else that is fine we're now in a society everything i gotta get this get this but it's okay if you want that and it's also okay that you're loving what you're doing where you are. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. I thank you so much for sharing that because I think some people forget that we go through seasons mm-hmm. in our life mm-hmm. and each season brings something different in terms of mm-hmm. what we need from our career, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes we just need a season where we're coasting and we are complacent and we're, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're doing it well but we're here (laughs) and we're not trying to reach for more. Mm -hmm. And I, that's such an important lesson right now. I, again, I hate to keep bringing up COVID, but it's impacted so many people's careers and lively. I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. And I think for some people who are in careers that weren't impacted Mm -hmm. in some way, it's like, understand that that is a huge privilege that you have and hold on to that. (laughs) Hold tight. (laughs) Oh, very tight. Okay, so this transitions into one of our last questions. And for those who don't know, I actually have a coaching career coaching program called Control Your Career. So that's one of my big themes around my podcast and around my social media and all of that. So my last question for you is, tell me about a time when you felt you took control of your career. 
moved into Atlanta. I worked at a county for like six years and, you know, local government, people say that till they retire and you have to wait for someone to retire so you can, you know, move along in war. So they say, oh, I think we can promote you. Um, I, I'm not that person. I'm not a pick me. <laughs> I made things happen for self. So I moved to Atlanta without a job and made things happen for self. I connect with the right people, put in the work, join organizations, study, watch videos. I'm speaking on great starting because that's why I learned a lot of stuff from and also working on someone that in turn became my best friend. And even I have questions to this day. My old director, YP, we have meetings and things talking about different things. And that you have to, when, when you working with someone, just don't make it one of those things. Oh, I'm go to work, go home. Make that time count. It's life. When you guys leave wherever you are, wherever your path may lead or take you, you never know how things circle back. My YP team right now is like family to me and we're really close. So taking the hold of my career is just making things happen for self. Get out of my comfort zone. I've taken a lot of L's and I'm proud of each and every one of them. I told you, I don't regret anything. Yes. Even things I'm like, what in the heck? All right. <laughs> you know, I'm that person. I look at things from the brighter side of things. I just don't sit and dwell because I can't change it. Right. I can learn from it. I can't right. change it. Um, but everything is a part of the process and you can't rush it, embrace it. But at the same time, you put in the work and I put in the work to sit in this seat now. And, and I say, I am darn proud of myself. But at the same time, I'm like, what in the heck I'm doing at the same time? Because I'm so like, oh, man. But then it gets better. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I did, I did this. So you got to find humor in it, laugh your way through what you learn. Always be open to learning. I learn from my team. We bounce things off each other. Do I know everything? No. But I know what I'm good at. And I make a way. And, and I know my strong suits and things of that sort. But taking control and get out of my comfort zone. It is okay to be afraid, to be scared. But step out. Yes. And this is my thing. I don't know the audience, but faith and determination will carry you through. Some days you're like, what is this? But it's okay. Keep pushing. Keep dreaming. Because I know this COVID stuff is, is real. Trust me. I know it's real. I have family, friends. I, trust me. I know. But keep pushing. Do not get wrapped up with what's going on out there. Stay in your lane. Stay on your path. And it will happen. Keep connecting. Keep putting your resume out there. And just do not spray your resume. <laughs> Quality searches equal quality hires. And ask those great questions. So for me, it's knowing what I want. I wanted to get in the lane where I'm sought after. And here I am. I have recruiters reaching out to me daily. Right. You know? And I'm fine by it. So put yourself out there making things happen for yourself. Make a way. Yes. Absolutely make a way. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I, I want to point something out because I want to make sure that people picked up on this. You moved, you moved to a new state without a job, which for a lot of people is anxiety inducing, just moving in and of itself, but to move somewhere without a job, that's crazy, but also awesome. Thank and you. I will tell you, so I grew up in Southern California, born, raised, spent the majority of my life there. I've only been in Utah the last like couple years at the time of this recording. And the differences between availability of jobs is very different. And I'm not saying everybody has to move to Utah or even to Atlanta, but <laughs> It's the idea of think outside the box when it mm -hmm. comes to your career also, and mm -hmm. don't be afraid to make a transition for a season. Mm -hmm. Because I know here, and I we talked in a previous discussion where Atlanta, I think is the same way. Yes. There's a lot of tech boom happening in places other than California. So yes. if you're interested in that, and so many tech companies are going remote now that it doesn't oh, matter where you live, yeah. Yeah. you know? But think about that. Look for positions in other states. And if you're in a position where you can move or you have that flexibility, do it. Even if you only do it for like th maybe three to five years, if it's going to mean that you can get the position that you want to, to jumpstart your career or get to that next level, it is absolutely 
worth it to do that because there are so many more opportunities out there than people realize when they stay in their bubble. And I'm not just talking about Southern California, but all over, you know, you just want to make sure that you understand how many opportunities are out there for you. And you'll definitely thank yourself later. You definitely will. You would think it's like, wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love that. I love that. Okay. So we have a couple of bonus questions because HR to me, as we said earlier, is such this ominous thing to a lot Mm -hmm. of people. And I work with a lot of clients who are interested in human resources. And usually the reason is because they like people and they want to help people, (laughs) which is wonderful. (laughs) I'm not knocking that at all. Um, but we've t- we've talked about a couple of strategies to think yeah. about when you know you're you're going into HR. But I would love to know: Are there some additional tips that you have for people just specifically wanting to go into that field? Like, what do they need to be doing now? What do they need to know to really be successful in HR? Say, make a way, brainstorm. I keep saying you're in control, and you can charge you in charge of your career path, which is truth. True. Learn the different roles. Study the field. Study the issues. Start study the trends. Know transferable skills. Meeting people. Put yourself out there. You know, just do not reach out to people when you're in need of a job. Build that rapport, that relationship there. You never know who knows who. You never know. You never know. And be ready. You never know where you may lay your next role. You may bump into someone at Publix. That's the grocery store here. You never know. You may. Who knows? Be ready. You know your lane um, and, and study. I say that is there are so many things that are up and coming on, like talent management, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's so many things. You're just looking at what you're doing now and, and see where can transfer over. And if you're having a hard time doing that, okay, we're a coach. You know, reach out. Julia's good with that, you know, you know, help you <laughs> with that and, and help you career path. Yeah. networking, join organizations, YouTube, learning, the, learning the, the world of HR, not just saying I like people and I'm good with people and I can do this with people. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always say you better like paperwork too, because yes. there's a lot of paperwork involved mm-hmm. in HR mm-hmm. <laughs> and yes. writing reports. Yes, and- yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. And, 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 and just brainstorming, like, where do I see myself? Right. Even population wise, right? Like, do you want to work with a startup that maybe has a, a more entry level mm-hmm. population of workers versus you know, an organization Mm -hmm. that's been around for a long time. And Mm -hmm. I, yeah. And even just industry, you know, there Mm -hmm. are industries that are so much more uh, Mm -hmm. buttoned up, I guess, is that (laughs) more conservative, right? Like they're just, they're, yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yes. I've turned down roles before um, because the industry, I'm like, oh, this is too suited and booted for me. No, right. I love that. You. Suited and booted. That, there we go. That's what we're calling it from now on. Suited and booted. <laughs> thank you, but no thanks. <laughs> but then, like, but the flip side of that is there are people that love that environment. Mm-hmm. They love getting up. You know, I've had clients that say, I just want to get up and wear a suit to work because that's mm-hmm. the vision that I've had for myself. Oh yeah. And I'm like, that's oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, like it there's is. nothing wrong with that. And I think that's some of the message. It's like, well, you need to do this. You need to mm-hmm. do that. You have to be part of a startup because that's mm-hmm. the thing right now. No, you mm-hmm. don't like nope. you need to go to an environment that works for you. Mm-hmm. So I love that you're sharing yes. that advice yes. with people, just yes. finding your lane and yes. figuring out what you really like and just unapologetically going for it mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. worrying about what other people think. Yeah. Network, network, network. Mentor is key. Building that relationship with your current manager, you know, try to career path with them. If you can have the honest conversation, if you want to pick up more duties that you see fit, that as a job search you see out there, just want to take on some of those duties, have that conversation. I think I can do this, bring this here more. Hey, I want to do her orientation, whatever the case is. 
find that and work it within your current um, role and responsibilities. And also transferable skills if you're ready to make that leap into HR if you're not already in or even if you're in, you want to take a different lane or approach within HR. Those transferable skills, definitely um, something that you need to look into how to work those things over. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's something that people don't quite understand when we say mm-hmm. transferable skills. They're like, I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> and the way that I like to explain it to my clients is there are skills out there that mm-hmm. are applicable for a lot of different types of careers. So one thing that you can actually do is Google LinkedIn's, I think it's top 10 Mm -hmm. skills. Every year they come out with the top 10 list of skills. Mm -hmm. There's a hard skills list and a soft skills list. And that is the best place to start is look at that list and figure out which skill set you already have. Mm -hmm. And then go from there because those are skills that the majority Mm -hmm. of employers on LinkedIn are looking Mm -hmm. for. So they're crossing over all different types of industries. Mm -hmm. But I think in the professional associations, and SHRM is one of the biggest and one of the best professional associations Mm -hmm. out there. Like it is Mm -hmm. a model for all other professional associations. Definitely. So you have to be involved if you're in HR, mm-hmm. but that's another way for you to really understand what are the common skill sets in my functional area or industry, mm-hmm. because most professional associations have some kind of list or guidelines for this is mm-hmm. what this is what excellence looks like mm-hmm. in this career. And here's mm-hmm. what you need to move forward. So there are a lot of resources oh, out there yeah. for you. Just Definitely. start searching, start Googling, yes. and you yes. will find them. And so I think we're at this age now where there is so much information yes. at our fingertips that there is no excuse anymore. And even TikTok, I, you know, I'm going to tell yes. you, <laughs> I, I am a user on TikTok. I don't post cause that's not my jam, but I watch TikTok all the time and it, It is amazing what people are putting out there in terms of just learning Mm -hmm. sometimes basic life skills. (laughs) And we just don't know about the funny one. I have to share this. The funniest one, it was like a total hack for me. The visor, I did not know it stands out. The (gasps) sunglasses. No, I saw that one too. And I went into my car the next day and I was like, oh. I send it out to everyone at work. I'm like, did you guys know this? <laughs> but that's it, right? Like, right. figure out what are you comfortable on right now? Maybe you don't like watching videos. Maybe you like listening to podcasts. Maybe yes. you love TikTok. Uh-huh. Search the hashtag. Yes. Like, there are pe- there are people. There's content. It's out there. And so there's, there's so much information that I think people don't realize. Yes. And they get stuck in this, well, I don't know. Well, mm-hmm. then find out. And another thing, LinkedIn Premium. If you can do it, do it. A lot of great things on there. Yes. Great content, short videos, long ones cover a lot of. I, I'm a premium member. I love it. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and on the pre, I mean, not that we're trying to, you know, put a no. pitch together for LinkedIn. They definitely do not sponsor this podcast <laughs> yet. <laughs> But when you're a premium member from a job searching standpoint, you see so many more analytics that are available and you can actually, you can see like, here are the skills that match this Mm -hmm. position, or here's where people are applying from. Here's how many applicants there are Mm -hmm. through LinkedIn. Now that's not going to be total across all Mm -hmm. platforms, but you at least get to see that. You see the recruiter, Mm -hmm. you know, there's so much extra data that you get when you're a premium member Mm -hmm. and you get 30 days for free. So if you know, you're going to go into a job search season, then Mm -hmm. time that really well so that you can at least use that free time Mm -hmm. to do the research and do some reaching out and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is a great tip. If you have the ability to use premium, absolutely use it. Definitely. 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 Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much for being here, being one of my guests. I have absolutely enjoyed our conversation. And I know that 
my audience has is going to get a lot out of this. <laughs> so for everybody listening, this episode is a little bit longer than what my traditional episodes are going to be, but that is because we have such a wonderful report. I knew going into it that it was going to be a long episode. So thank you for sticking thank with you. us. Brucey, thank you so much for being on my podcast and where can people get connected with you? LinkedIn at Brucey Denise. Wait, do we say the at sign on LinkedIn? I don't know. No, no. I don't think so. You know what? I will put a link to it in the show notes. (laughs) I'm I'm sure I'm the only person. So you guys will find me. I have the TikTok banner. There I am. Connect with me. Inbox me. I love to chat. Love to talk. If you have any questions, anything, I'm open. open. Ask me anything. I don't care. I will tell you. I want to see and help people thrive. Anything. And I I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you taking the time and thank you.